according to Matthew. Jesus again replied, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. The second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my cast and fattened cattle are killed. Everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready. Go, but those who are invited were not ready to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servant went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet his guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he reduced to silence. And the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. So, uh, this time of year, we are going toward the end of the church here, and uh, Advent will start a new church here, end of November. And so every year, when we get to this end of the church calendar, we turn our attention to the end times, our call to the heavenly banquet. Now, I think many times the scripture is, paints a very beautiful picture of that scene of the heavenly banquet. And Isaiah is always in these readings, always does a beautiful job of describing this beautiful banquet that we're all looking forward to. The rich foods, fine wines. And so oftentimes I wonder if we if the picture is painted so nicely, how come more people don't choose this path? And I, I work with that a lot. I wonder about why people don't choose the path for this heavenly banquet. In the same token, in the parable of Jesus talking about the wedding feast, and really talking about the church Israelite history. The first ones were, they were chosen and invited to the wedding feast. They, some refused and got busy. And some even killed the servants. That would be the prophets that were sent out to the first chosen, the Israelites. And so God then invited more people to the banquet. That would be the Gentiles. That would be us. Good or bad alike were invited to this wedding banquet. That, that strange uh, uh, portion there about uh, the one guy that didn't wear the proper clothing was thrown out. And I've heard many times people say, well, that doesn't sound right. After all, he was called the last minute he wouldn't have a, a wedding garment. <laughs> but that's not really the point, though. So the point is that even those that are called second, us, still have to respond in, in a, the right way when you're invited to the heavenly banquet. You still have to act in a righteous way. And that was the point behind him being thrown out, is that the... the not wearing the proper garment was he was not being righteous. And so therefore he did not respond appropriately to the call of the banquet. But I still wonder, I still wonder why more people don't choose the path to the heavenly banquet. Well, we all make choices in our life, and that's 
We have freedom of choice. And St. Paul talked about it in his second reading today. He said about it, it's the secret. He has a secret to living a good life. And so when we hear that, we hear, well, we have a secret. We want to know what it is. We want to know the secret. How do we live our life? And St. Paul says, well, I've lived in abundance, and I've lived in poverty, and I've always, I found that to live in both situations, I live with, with and through Christ. And that's the secret. And many times in our abundance, we feel like, we don't need God. I can do it on my own because I have all this. I'm living in abundance. I can do it on my own. And when we're in poverty, physically or spiritually, we still feel like, well, God's not here. I'll do it on my own. I'm not being helped here at all by God. And so in a lot of situations, in our abundance, in our poverty, we say that we're going to live on our own. And St. Paul said, no, the secret is in both cases, you live with and through Christ. No matter what the situation in your life. If you do that every day, you'll know how to handle the abundance. You'll know how to handle the poverty if you're living with Christ every day. That's the secret. Two weeks ago, I wasn't here. I was at a, a Rachel's Vineyard retreat weekend. Uh, ministry that I'm involved in. Uh, Rachel's Vineyard is a healing ministry. It's for those parents who have lost a child through abortion. These people have suffered for many years, usually decades before they realize that there's something wrong in their life. And it manifests itself in addictions, um, failed relationships, and a spiritual disconnection from God. And after many years, they come to realize that so many years ago, I lost my child. And they had not properly grieved that child. And so they are in, when they come to the weekend, the winter weekend, they are in a very bad spot and need for healing. And so they made choices throughout their life. I said they have freedom of choice. They made their choices. But it's not the end. Because when we do our weekend, we, we let them know that it is the church, God, is a loving God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. And they come to realize that in all these years that they've been holding this within them, they can finally let it go and they can grieve the loss of their child. What we do for them is that we go through that process of recognizing the loss. They provide a name for their child. They write a letter to their child. At the end of the weekend, we do a memorial service for that child. The founder, Dr. Teresa Burke, she found this situation when this is quite 20 years ago and she's a, a psychologist. And she was at a internship, it was one of her job duties was to run a eating disorder group. And she found that exploring the cause of their eating disorder, she found out that they had an abortion in their history. And it's usually a woman. But her, her professors and her superiors wouldn't let her approach that or even deal with that. They said, no, that's not the cause. Don't go there. But she found more and more and more. So she had to find her own ministry, and that's what she did. And then people could realize the root cause of their pain and their suffering. Many women 
And this happens when we're in a unplanned pregnancy, a crisis pregnancy. They weren't expecting this. And they asked they ask themselves, what am I going to do? I can't do this on my own. I can't. I have a career. I have finances. Whatever. My parents. A lot of situations they don't know what to do. And many times the man, this is unplanned precious pregnancies, many times the man is not very supportive because first off they, they will either not want the commitment and they will encourage the abortion or they'll be silent thinking that well it's her choice, let her decide, whatever she decides I will support her. Of course, his silence then, for her, means he's not supporting me. He thinks he's supporting her. And so it's a lack of communication. This happens over and over and over again. And then she makes the decision to abort the child. Years later then, usually the woman, sometimes the man, will come to the Rachel Vineyard Weekend or other supportive weekends like this. And we will make them whole again. October is Respect Life Month. And the Archbishop, the theme for this month is uh, John 10.10. 10. I have come in my life, life to the full. And so these people cannot have life to the full as Jesus wants them to have until they are whole until they are whole within. And then they can have life to the, to the full. And that's what we want for all people. It's a dignity issue, human dignity. Not only for the child that was lost, but for the parents who have lost the child. Who were told lies about that it won't matter, it's okay, this is your best choice. So, we have choices to make in life. And we want everyone to choose life. We want you to be on the path for the heavenly banquet. There was a, we're doing 40 Days for Life right now, and there was a site down in Texas where they were praying from the clinic. At the end of the day, the clinic worker walked out and threw eight plastic babies on the ground in front of them and said, I don't know how going to be here, but this is how many we did today. So her choice, the clinic worker's choice, we prayed for her too, was to be hateful and destructive. Hopefully our choice will be to choose life. And anyone that we know that may have experienced this loss, we will help them back on the path where they can be full again and have life to the full. <clears throat>